Hello there, in this video I make simply of this movement. It is a seagull movement and I will start with the killer's work and what we have here it is a serious ST16 movement from seagull so ST1690. This is what I could found about the caliber. Unfortunately on the movement there are no marks. And the only source here is AliExpress or eBay, so I can not promise you it is a reliable information source. Anyway, this is the part two. The part one was pretty short, about 10 minutes, where I was doing the disassembly. Here you will see only assembly of the movement, but I will not lie you. This video will be much longer because I want to show you all details and everything what I can and make this video helpful for those who are hobbyist watchmaker and and will face someday a need to service this seagull movement. I started here with the keyless work and because we have here a stop second and I need to install it after installing the clutch wheel and therefore this order. Okay, so let's come back to our movement, a little bit grease, maybe a little bit too much, but I think this one will do. Now the setting lever spring. I think I'm probably the first person on YouTube who is doing this service, so I hope you will share this video with all watchmakers, fan, hobbyists and so on. Okay, here I need to put this plate and before I was having here a screw just to secure the yoke so that it doesn't fly away. And now the keyless work is finished. Let's check it. So I hope you will share this video with all hobbyist watchmaker or watch enthusiasts. Yeah, well here, hmm, it seems uh, that the clutch wheel is not in the right direction, it should be the other way round. I have to, to turn it, but luckily I don't need to disassemble anything here. Okay, now oh, should be okay, and now let's check it. Now should work everything like it should be. Yep, now both wheels are engaging. Okay, so I can now go on with the gear trains. And first I'm starting here, of course, with the center wheel. And in the moment comes other, other wheels. Let's tighten the screws, but before I put the wheels on place. First I need to also oil and put the main spring barrel. If you are first time on Ticking Watch and you didn't subscribe yet, and if you like this type of content, let's subscribe and be alerted for new content. That's the stop second lever. Actually, actually, I was thinking not to put it here, just uh, forget it. I have better experience with this stop second lever in these Chinese watches. But okay, here I need to also first prepare the top plate of the gear train, because here is also a wheel that winds the main spring. This is one of the intermediate wheel wheels we have two here that are between the ratchet wheel and the 
clutch wheel. Okay, now the gears or wheels. That's the sweep second pinion. This is the click spring. I don't know what is the function here. But okay. Wheels are engaging. Of course, uh, connecting the bridge with the wheels with the pivots. It's not so easy, so it needs time and praxis. I very often get questions about that. How you do this? Uh, the only thing that I can say now is that you need quite a lot of practice. Do not rush here and figure out when you are installing the bridges or the bridge, the top bridge, especially when you have more pivots to adjust like here we have three actually four because there's also an additional pivot from the barrel but this one is not so difficult to adjust uh, now the canyon pinion so if you have more pivots to adjust let's check because there is always something like that that the one pivot is a little bit higher and start to adjust as a first pivot exactly this one and then go to another one and then another one and most cases the last one is this one from the escape wheel and yeah I think this is the right order to do this you will know if you make few of them it's not so difficult of course you need to always be careful these pivots can be very easily damaged but anyway I always recommend to start with old movements that are actually piece of that should be theoretically throw away but for training they are just perfect Okay, now the top side of this seagull movement and I think this this part is quite difficult because we have here few let's say levels and we've done already the first level and now we have to make the second level where are all springs and levers for the GMT complication and also for the date complication here because the date here doesn't have any dial, uh, date dial we have here only a sub dial and with a hand uh, or a hand shows us what date we have okay this plate is secured and now all these parts all these levers so good that I made the first part because so I could quite easily check where which lever or spring or wheel goes in which place this is the plastic wheel from the date this one changes the date and here comes a wheel uh, which is then connected with the hand and this one this wheel this wheel changes the GMT hour and this is here some yeah, lever and here is the GMT wheel and here of course comes a first lever that plays in the right 
position the date of the wheel which is connected with the hand and here is also next lever and here is a screw for the spring for this lever and so on and so on anyway you will see here it comes also yeah, some washer quite a lot of parts here I think it could be done much better here's also some distance plate it could be done much better without all this uh, and here's also some screw that holds uh, two levers and also two springs and we have four of them let's screw back the first one this is the third or oh, actually the fourth one some things I just do off camera because in my opinion uh, tighten the screw is not so exciting thing to show you and well yeah here I see that these two screws have to be removed before I put another plate. So many plates, lever, springs. Okay, anyway, I have to remove these two screws. Okay, second one and now I can match this plate and this is also some kind of distance plate now I can go back with these two screws actually first this one here's also another distance plate so I'm not doing here everything in the right order because I'm servicing this movement first time in my life I've done many others but of course any manufacturer have his own solutions of course the basic is the same like the gear train like the keyless work but for example this I never saw such solutions before okay this lever is for the quick GMT setting and this lever is for a quick date set or is rather for changing quick date oh, sorry for my English but anyway I hope you understand this so this lever is for the quick date change oh, maybe let's say this like that and now should come this GMT wheel and of course for these two levers for the quick quick change a quick adjustment we need two springs and this spring also should be in some way connected with the levers should be fixed or all the levers should be made in a different way it's some kind of saving a cost because it's always easier to take some spring that probably is lying somewhere and and this uh, is a part of a, another watch this is the second one okay and this lever is for placing rather adjusting the GMT hour okay and of course this lever also have their own spring let's put the a little bit grease I'm not sure I'm actually not sure if I need to because you don't need you don't use very often this these levers anyway, ah, and here we have a fourth spring and this one also should come here okay so I think I can install now 
the final plate okay and this final plate is having seven screws seven tiny screws of course I show you only the first one because the other six you are screwing back in the same way of course okay and when we are finished with the top side of the movement of this seagull movement now the pellet fork with its cock of course the pellet fork was before putting it on place was of course oiled or lubricated and here okay Anyway, in general, I have a good impression about this movement, this single movement. It's maybe not done very accurately, uh, very clean. But anyway, the parts are quite solid, comparing, for example, with the DG2813 that I made some time ago. Oh, now it's working. Uh, these parts are quite robust and I think this movement has a chance. Now the balance, very important part. So this movement, in my opinion, is having a chance to work, I know, a couple of years, maybe a few decades. It should at least to work a few decades because if it doesn't achieve uh, this performance, it's, it is not a good movement. I have Swiss movements that are working since 50 years or, or, or 70 years. Of course they are not worn now every day, but were worn every day 50 years ago. Okay, now the balance jewel and I think we are almost finished, no, maybe not finished because we have still few things to do. But the balance, very important part, will be finished in a moment. Yep, the watch is working. Let's give it a little bit wind. And now I need to make the winding mechanism. Here the winding mechanism and its construction is a little bit similar to Seiko or Orient movements. Now this bridge. Under this bearing there is a post which is connected with these two levers which are engaged with this wheel and yeah and in this way very efficient way to wind the movement. You need to be careful here not to damage the jewel there. And I know if you notice, but the sweep second pinion, or the pinion from the sweep second, doesn't have a jewel bearing. And this is, I think, a weakness. Could be a jewel there. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, my dear audience, we are finished, that's the finish watch. I skipped the assembly of putting back the movement into the case because I told myself I've done it so many times and the video is getting longer. So the only thing that you should remember is when you will set back the hands, you should adjust four hands so the GMT hand, minute, hour hand and of course the date hand so it should be done exactly when the date changes in the midnight remember to subscribe share this video and be alerted for my next upload thanks for watching bye bye